guys, happy Friday. So on today's live stream, I'm just gonna kind of show y'all a couple of things that we have in the shop, answer questions. I've got a lot of questions from you guys that I've saved up. So the first thing that I think is absolutely hilarious is we keep getting questions on these pencils that I have laying around my sewing room. There is an Amazon link below. Um, you can also, we got these at Target. They're not the exact ones, but they're the same brand. Basically, if you just search Papermate 1.3, yeah, 1.3, it's like a really thick lead, and this is what Lori Holt uses when she, um, she hand draws every single thing that uh, she does. So whether it be applique or designing her fabric or she draws everything. And y'all just saw these. So I thought this was funny. So I'm going to pick two winners just to get these pencils because I think y'all are hilarious. So just comment below on this video. Um, say something funny, like tell us a joke or something, and Lily will pick the winners later today. But um, they're just Papermate 1.3. I tried to buy some on Amazon and they sent me black pens. So I got the wrong thing. So we had to run to Target and they don't have the exact same ones, but they're similar enough. So there's that. Some other stuff that we got that I think is super cute is we got some cute little canvas bot bags from Riley Blake this week. They're super low priced. Um, they have funny sayings like cool teen is my cardio. Anyway, they're super cute. Um, I thought I would just show y'all and the quality is really um, good like if you open it and look at the stitching it's really nice um, so anyway I'm gonna be using these for myself so I brought them home and thought you know I might as well just like show y'all because I brought them home for myself and then we got these these are selling really fast um, these are autumn Autumn Love Tea Towels. So these are by Lori. So I brought them home actually just because I love Lori's stuff. But they're actually much better quality than most of the tea towels that I see. Like this is better quality than home goods. So these are these are kind of cute. And everyone's making that acorn table runner. So if you want something to kind of go with it, we've got this. And then um, one thing is I always talk about design boards all the time. And we actually have a stack over here I'm going to bring and show you. So I'm actually working on an upcoming book. I can't really show you what's on top, but in all of these is three blocks. So this quilt that I'm making has 72 blocks and I need to keep it organized. So I actually taped the block name to my board with some simple washi tape. And I think I use Bunny and Camille washi tape. And by this weekend, all 72 blocks will be on um, these boards. So the boards I just show you, showed you were like a mix of things that I had made and ones that I had bought. The ones that we showed you are discontinued. Um, but basically, if you want to make them, they're super cheap to make. We have a video if you just search on YouTube uh, how to make design boards. And then Lily can add a link to, the, um, to this video below on how to do it. And it's Lori Holt's method. It's not my method. So we had a lot of you, you know, some people don't want to make them. So we have six new ones. We have three small and three large. These are brand new. Uh, I predict they will be gone soon because I only ordered, I only ordered a couple hundred of each. Um, and I handpicked these from Riley Blake for our store and tried to, this is Cozy Christmas, um, but I tried to pick ones that don't read Christmas so that you can use them in your stash. So. And we have these new to help you with your sewing. I mainly, um, if y'all are curious, I mainly use the small, which is exactly what I just showed you. Um, that's what I mainly use. And then one thing that um, I was going to talk to y'all about like a month ago, but we sold out. This is a new program that is free for, um, free for, it's a good thing. Like if you're a beginner and you want something free, a free pattern online, Riley Blake came up with, this idea, this is a quilt. I'm gonna show it to you first. And it is using their cozy cotton, no, confetti cotton. And it is called Meet the Makers. So this is a quilt kit that I'm gonna show you next. And it has the free pattern in it. 
But if you don't want to make it in this fabric and you just want to do some of it at home, the uh, patterns are available on the Riley Blake blog. Cindy has lots of free videos and um, the designers that are sewing along also have the patterns on their blog. Now, if you want the free, I mean, no, not free. If you want the full pattern that has every single step in it, they're going to release that pattern for sale in a couple of months. But if you want it now, the only way they're offering it is in the kit. And I'm going to show you the kit. The only reason this kind of, just so you know, this started about five weeks ago. And I didn't show it to you guys because we sold out of the kits in less than 24 hours. So we have more. Um, and I love this box. We also sell this box separately if you just want the box. But um, it's called Meet the Makers. I'm going to open it carefully because it's not my kit. And I don't want to mess it up. And it comes um, wrapped in some cute little bubble wrap so that it's not bent when you order it from us. So this is the kit. It's a really nice. It's got a magnetic closure. So you've got the pattern and all of the beautiful um, solids and it's cute. Anyway, I, I love it. I love that you can store your blocks in it as you sew. And um, does anybody have any questions on this? Because I've gotten a lot of questions on Meet the Makers when it first started all the way through now. So if y'all have questions on the Meet the Makers, I asked Cindy and Holly who work at Riley Blake yesterday, so I would be prepared for your questions. I think the only question uh, that we have been getting is, do, is the pattern available separately? Does it have to come with the kit? So for now, the pattern only comes in the kit unless you want the individual block patterns. You can go to the blog or Riley Blake's YouTube channel or their designers pages, copy paste, print it out yourself. But the full pattern that you see in here will be available for sale in a couple of months. Right now they're offering it um, exclusively in the kit as an incentive to buy their kit. Um, another thing that came in that I'm so excited about is this arrived two days ago. So if you reserved your book, Perfect 10, that is designed by my team at Fat Quarter Shop and it's so Emma, it will be shipping today if your credit card processed. So I'm gonna flip through and just kind of show you guys. I'm so proud of this book. It's so cute. It's only $14.95 and it has 16 patterns. So um, super inexpensive very beginner friendly um we kind of start off our books with the easiest and then go down to the hardest just to so you'll see as you get further in they might be a little bit more complicated but that's i mean that's super easy so this is our brand new book um so cute and uh, the ruler that goes with it is the same size we made the book see like the book is 10 inches the ruler is 10 inches it's all like goes together so the ruler is um available and has been available for about two weeks what i love about it is obviously it's creative grids which is what i use but it has markings on the one inch and the half inch and no one eighth of an inch or a quarter inch so that if you're just doing like a easy pattern which is what these are geared to be um you know, you can see it easier. So that's cool. And then I finally got my quilt back from the quilter. And this is going to be our, it's going to be a free sampler sew along, but you have to have the book. So um, this, I finally got it back from the quilter. And this is how it looks. I'll give you details in a minute. And then I did a fun piece backing. I had some leftover blocks from the front and then I get the Sweetwater Club label club that I pay for. I'm not endorsing it um, for pay or anything. I pay for these. And this was the label that came this month. So I just put it right in the center and just I had some leftover layer cakes um, that I put on the back. And I'm going to do a tutorial on piece backing soon. I'm just trying to get together a couple more quilts that have really intricate piece backings to kind of show you how you can go from really simple to really intricate. So that will be coming soon. Um, and that actually starts October 9th. 
Um, if you want to sew along with this, you need 31 medium to medium to dark prints that are layer cake squares. So a lot of layer cake squares have, or layer cake packs have, a lot of light. So you might need one or two. I use two, and then as you can see, I use leftovers on the back. Um, so that is going to be on our blog, and we have a lot of bloggers sewing along, and I just picked a layer cake that I thought was really pretty, and I love how it came out, and I like love it. I can't wait to get it done. Of course, I don't have the binding on. I think every week y'all see that I <laughs> don't have the binding on, but I do have the ghost binding finished. Um, let's see. The other thing that we got some, I got some other questions on was glow in the dark thread. There's a link below on it, but we keep getting questions on it. It is a product that is, um, it's, um, I think it's, do you remember the manufacturer? Wonderfill. Wonderfill. So it is Wonderfill. It's glow in the dark thread. And what our sales rep said is if you put it, like if you quilt it or whatever, and you put it in light, then it will glow in the dark. But over time, it like in the middle of the night, it's not going to be glowing in the dark because it needs the light. So it's like if you put it in the sun, it's going to sun, sh it's going to be shinier. And when you first turn the lights off, it's going to shine, but then it's going to dull over time. Um, if you wash it, I'm not sure how that affects it. Um, I'm still waiting on the answer. So in my Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook, y'all should start like a thread and just talk about the glow in the dark because I haven't used it. I do love the colors it comes in. I was considering using it on the ghost quilt, but because I put Minky on the back, I kind of didn't think I should try to mix two mediums together like that with ever not trying it before. I didn't want to mess up my quilt. So um, if I had put cotton on the back, I was going to put um, glow in the dark on the front, but I just didn't. Um, so that's kind of a new thing. We just have a whatever colors they have available. They're very Halloween-ish colors. Um, but I would love for y'all to kind of start a conversation within yourself because I'm not an expert on it, but that is what I was told by my sales rep. And then I have two other questions that I'm going to address. Um, one of them is I had a question about copyright and how it affects us. And I will say that as a general, like think about how you live your life. Are you a positive person? Are you a negative person? Think about it. People selling their patterns, that is how they get paid. They probably have children. They probably have bills, just like you and I. So as a copyright, you should not share patterns. It is not a good thing to do. It is not something I do. If I sew a quilt that is by Bonnie and Camille, I do not just take it from inventory, Xerox it, and put it back in inventory. That is so against any kind of um, thing that I am. I pay for the pattern, take it out of inventory, and keep it. So even though I own a quilt shop, I pay for the pattern because that designer deserves that income. And so I would say it would probably affect me personally less because I have a bigger shop. But in the end, do you want to be a good person or a bad person? That's kind of how I would phrase it because it's somebody's work of art. I mean, if you go to a retreat and 20 people share a pattern, that might be great for you, but in the end, it's maybe not so great for the designer. And in the end, like I totally believe in karma and maybe something like that would happen to you and it's just not right. So I would just say when you're thinking about copyright, pay for the pattern. Patterns are like $9, $10. Don't Xerox somebody's book. You know, don't copy someone's book and put it on Facebook. I mean, I have seen so many times where people just take a picture and put it on Facebook so somebody can copy it. And they're like, oh, it's just one pattern. Do you know how many hours it takes to do a book from not only drawing out the pattern, sewing the block, taking the photo, printing it, paying money to print. I mean, there's so many behind the scenes that, that you guys wouldn't think about. And in the end, it's just all about being a good person. So that would be my spiel on that. The other question that I got was reservation fees. And that is something we have done from the beginning. And the reason we have to do it is credit card companies to save your credit card number. I have to charge you something because I can't charge you zero because the credit card company cannot save a zero dollar transaction. 
So if, let's say for example, we have a fat quarter bundle that's $10. Let's just be like super easy math. $10, right? I have to get your credit card number and say that I have 100 people that, have, that need this bundle. I cannot stop my business and call 100 people to get your credit card number. So I have to have something in the system. So that's the reservation fee. Now say that this bundle is $10. If you paid me $2.50, I'm only going to charge you $8.50 later. So it's all part of the product. It's not a way for me to get extra money. It's a way for me to, so when I, when I price a block of the month or a bundle, the price that you pay up front is part of the price of the product. I don't deduct it later because this plus this equals the product. It's not this plus this minus this equals the product. The way I price it is this plus this equals the product. So um, it's just a way for me to be efficient in getting your orders out and getting the money in. It's not a way for me to rip you off or anything else like that. It's just a way for me to run my business that is customer service friendly to you so that you can get your product on time. So there's that. And then I'm going to open it up to questions. We have some questions we've saved. And then also next week, I have exciting news. Next week, when Lily is going on vacation. So on Wednesday, we are going to have our live stream instead of Friday. And I'm going to be showing and discussing. And I'm going to have a free PDF on on-point math. Uh, Vicki McGee has asked for it. And a lot of our customers have asked for it. And I have been so slow on doing it. And I'm so sorry. I just got only so much time in my day. So I have come up with the perfect quilt that I'm going to sew this weekend. And we're going to go over on point math next Wednesday. And I think y'all are going to love it. So if y'all have questions, we're going to use this one to be more of a question. And then next week's going to be pure tutorial probably. All right. So we do have questions. Um, but first I just want to give a shout out to Mr. Domestic. Hi, Matthew. Hey, talking about um copyrights and stuff he said be a good person yes Yay. yeah it is i mean in the end like when you live your life do you want to be a good person do you not when you're at the red light do you want to cut somebody off or do you not i mean it all kind of comes back it's all the same thing like i can be totally philo philosophical sometimes and you probably don't want me to go down that rabbit hole because <laughs> i will never come back um, and just like as a note on that, one of my sons this morning got, that's why we were like two minutes late, is I, one of my sons, Peyton, who's the hilarious one, and um, he got the Respect Award at school. So I'm so super proud of him. At lunch, I'm going to go get it framed at Michael's, like just put it in a little frame and have it hung on the wall by the time he comes home and make a big deal about it. But I mean, in the end... How did he get that award? Respect. He learned that from Kevin and I. And so it's all about being like a good person, being a good example, that whole thing. It all is the same thing. Copyright, being nice to your friend. It's all the same. You don't want me to go down the whole, I can be, I, I should have just been a psychologist. It's probably what I should have been. Oh. <laughs> all right, let's see. We do have questions coming in, um, but I am gonna give priority to our YouTube member questions because they okay. submitted questions ahead of time. Um, Selena Spencer had been asking, when you starch fabric, how do you manage larger pieces, like five yards of background that will be cut in different sizes? It's not an easy task. Right. So when you're starching, and first, like, I'm going to refer you to our starch videos. We have two on YouTube. It is the Lisa Bonjean method that I took. I like to give her credit. So you can, like, go view those videos to know kind of what I'm talking about. But what I do is and this is kind of controversial also, is I cut all of my borders length of fabric. So when I get my kit, I will first cut my borders. So for example, the quilt that I just showed you on the design board, it needed four two and a half inch strips for the border. So what I did is, sorry, two and a half times four is 10. So I cut 12 inches length of fabric starched that and then um, just laid it as flat as I could not on top of anything else and then what I did is if it's all just um, if it's all just piecing from there I will cut half inch or 14 inch trunk chunks at a time so I definitely do not starch five yards at a time I just sit and one thing that I always do whether it be an Itsuema pattern fat quarter shot pattern any kind of pattern Bonnie and Camille pattern I sit and look through the entire pattern before I start. So that's part of my process of, 
you know, cutting my border, then cutting the rest. So I just sit, look at the pattern, see what I need. And if you don't need, if you don't want to do length of fabric, then just cut yourself some half half yard chunks. All right. And all of the next questions are from Donna Regal. Okay. Uh, she is awesome. One of our awesome YouTube members, and she's always like super interested in everything that we're doing. So she says, I love the fat quarter idea of the collections and having material together. Um, but what do you do when you have leftover bolts of fabric? Do you ever mix collections together? Do you cut material down into pre-cuts? So in the shop, if we have leftover fabric, honestly, we just sell it by the yard. But as a, so like as a business, I would just sell that by the yard. But we do have curated bundles. But those curated bundles are put together when we order the fabric. So we will literally lay it on the floor. And that's actually something we're going to show you in an upcoming video about the sew sampler behind the scenes is how we pick it. We literally will lay an entire manufacturer. We have a nice clean floor all the way down. And then we'll say, okay, there's a lot of navy down there. Let's do a curated bundle with navy and pink or... So the curated bundles are all from brand new inventory. They're not anything we're trying to get rid of. As a person who sews, I keep, I usually sew with the same type of color. So red, pink, aqua. Um, if it's something that I sew with regularly, I have two bins. They're not that full. One has starched fabric and one has unstarched fabric. I'll save them. If it's like black, green, brown, something I never sew with, I will probably just give it to one of my employees to use or give it to a friend, give it to Lori Holt, give it, I won't throw it away, but I'll give it to somebody. So I kind of keep, and then I'll, I could use those on pieced backings or a scrappy something for the future that I show you guys. So that's kind of, I guess, business wise, what I do and personally wise, what I do. And do you sell material by the bolt? And if so, how can we get it? So if you want a fabric by the bolt, just enter 15 yards, like the number one five and hit add to cart. And then what you can do is in the comments say, please give me full bolt discount. That's number one. Number two, if we don't have 15 yards, you can either call us, email us, or we have a chat function now that is brand new that we are testing. And it is in the bottom right section and you can just say i placed this order please apply the bolt discount i think the bolt discount is 10 percent it might be 15 percent. i actually cannot remember but whatever that discount is my customer service team knows and um when i do buy bolts because i do buy them i buy either 9998 or 97 just kind of whatever i'm in the mood for 98 is pure white 97 is off white and I um, just keep those. That's all I ever really buy in a bolt. All right. And she also asked, would you like to see your children follow in yours and Kevin's footsteps into the business? I don't really know. Um, I guess if we want to go back to philosophy and all that, I really strongly believe that whatever you do in life should be something that you love. And you should do something that you can pay your bills, right? Like number one is pick something you can pay your bills and number two, uh, follow your passion. Uh, none of my kids really sew or anything. So I don't know. I mean, I guess if I really thought about what our plan is, I would say we're going to work to work as old as we can and we would probably sell the business. Um, I see Will being an author. Um, I see Christopher being a lawyer. I see Emma being like a dancer in New York who is broke the rest of her life because she cannot stop dancing. And I see, I see Peyton, I don't know, maybe like a politician. I'm not, I'm not really sure. So I don't really see them, but I mean, if they wanted to, I would be open to it. Um, but I would not want to force my kids into doing what we do. I think they should live their life. And as long as they can support themselves, um, I'm all for supporting whatever that is that they want, but yeah, so I'd say either way, we're definitely not pushing them to work at back quarter shop. Now on black Friday, do they have to work? Yes. In the summer, does Emma work in the warehouse? Yes. They, they have to work to earn things. So whether it be chores or fat quarter shop, they have to work for their things. Like right now for school, they're in a brand new school that we haven't been in before and they all use Chromebooks and all of Emma's friends have Chromebooks and she's like, can you buy me one? And I'm like, well, we're gonna work towards that. So basically Kevin and I have to write out some kind of plan that's like, she has to sign it, and it's gonna be like, you have to do these things and then you'll get a Chromebook. 
like we don't just give our kids um I mean they get some things but like a Chromebook please like I don't even know what that is so I'm like yeah here you can you can have one you're gonna work for it sorry I'm like really hyper today or something and I'm going off on crazy tangents I think I've been up too long uh, people were saying they really love the energy I'm like ah. Um, and the last question from our YouTube members from Donna Eagle is hi I am for some unknown reason hung up on thread what kind of thread to use I have a large quantity of polyester because I sew costumes now I'm a newbie to quilting and everything's cotton how can you tell if the thread is too old um, and apparently Aurafil is not readily available where she lives um, and she stood in front of a spool display and picked up a cotton brand unwinding it pulled it and it broke away right away <laughs> Yes, yeah, so thread is kind of, um, I have heard that thread goes bad. I've never had an Aurifil thread go bad. I have drawers of Aurifil, but I, I do think thread it will go bad. Um, I think if it just breaks in your machine over and over, like I would say it's probably lost its strength. I would get rid of it. As a quilter, for the piecing the quilt top, I would always use 100% cotton. If you don't have Aurifil in your area, Mettler has 100% cotton and Guterman has 100% cotton. And I believe those brands are available at um, places like Joann's or uh, places like that. Um, I pretty much only use Aurifil. My rule of thumb is I use Color 2000 99% of the time. Um, I'm actually out of it. I haven't gotten it because I have one spool left. Um, if I'm going to do a darker quilt, I will err on the side of darker thread because darker thread will show up less than lighter thread. So when you're using a light quilt, I don't think it really matters. Just use a light thread. It does get tricky when you do dark. I'm super do not like to see thread in quilts. When I walk up and I don't know how to, like when I look at other people's quilts, do I judge? Yeah. I don't like I don't really care what people do though like I think you should do whatever you love if you want to use dark thread you should do it but my eye always goes to thread um, and so I don't want to see thread here if it's my quilt if it's your quilt you can do whatever you want and like I'm also super picky about my long arm quilting which is why I generally just do pantographs I don't like my quilting to show up I want my piecing to show up so I'm I'm very picky with my long armor I think I drive him crazy I he picks up, he's a super nice guy. He comes to our warehouse every day, picks up and delivers quilts because my, all, my, all my employees use it. And as a benefit of working for us, we buy the big, huge Quilter's Dream batting and then I pay for the batting. And also like if it's for a pattern, sometimes I pay for the quilting. So anyway, we have this whole agreement with this guy. But if it's my quilt, I drive to his house and I sit there for like 30 minutes and I put thread on there and I'm super like picky about what thread. So, um, thread and me were kind of, I don't like, like, a lot of people like really colorful thread on their quilts and that would, that like just drives me crazy. So, um, it's all about though, like, it all goes back to you should do whatever you want. If you want your thread to show, do it. You should do whatever you love, whether it be your quilting, your job, your whatever, like, it's all the same thing, like, do whatever you want. But anyway, I would say if you're piecing, use cotton because I think that's what you asked. Yeah. I'm super hyper today. I'm so sorry. Oh, good. Yeah, I think she was asking like how you can tell. Um... Yeah, and if, if, if it's breaking a lot in your machine, I've never actually had that happen, but um, I would throw it out. Okay, uh, so let's start with the questions we've been getting from YouTube and Facebook. Um, the first one I'm popping up is actually, since you asked for jokes to pick a, oh, joke. a winner, I'm just putting up some of the um, jokes I've noticed. The first one was from Leanne, and she says, what's the difference between burgers and broccoli? Kids don't eat broccoli. Yeah, and then why, does seven, why is seven scared of eight? Because eight, eight, nine. No, oh, why is, wait, see, I told the joke wrong. Why is something, because 789, so. Six afraid of seven. Why is six afraid of seven, because 789? Anyway, that's, <laughs> see, I can't tell the joke. But my son, Peyton, one of the funny things is we went to, uh, it was so funny that Kevin and I were so embarrassed and we almost like could not stop laughing in public and we were so embarrassed of ourselves. We went to um, Disney World and we went to like one of those things you like sit down and there's people like telling jokes and um, they would tell the jokes and my son would answer the joke. And then people would look at us 
And then we started laughing and we were like laugh, we could not stop laughing. And then it was just like so embarrassing for all of us because it was so funny, but we were like dying laughing that our son was like ruining it. Cause he would like answer the joke anyway. It was so funny. Um, and Lisa just says uh, she loves the uh, big pencils because they're great for what she says is fat finger syndrome. Yeah, and you know, I'm, I'm super picky about, I mean, I'm OCD, so like just I'm picky about everything, but I don't like my pencil lead to break. So I prefer either just a regular pencil or a pencil that's like, um, I use pencils for pretty much everything. I hardly ever use pens. Like when I proof the it's my books, I use pencils because, yeah, and I like that they're super thick. Uh, and then another joke from Tony, uh, Tony said, why was the blanket arrested? It looked quilty instead of guilty. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and then let's see. Oh, somebody was asking how much does the Meet the Makers kit cost? I actually do not know. Uh, but the link is below. So you guys yeah. So, link, so just look at the link below. Um, I don't remember. And the Perfect 10 book, does it use layer cakes? It does. So it is called Perfect 10 because the book is 10 inches. It, you, all of the patterns use layer cakes and they all are used geared towards that pattern and very simple cutting. And so, um, let me see, all of them use one print layer cake. Some of them plus a background and some of them use background yardage and some of them use background layer cakes. Um, and Patty says she's surprised that you're barefoot because it's cold where she is. It is actually, yeah, cold outside. I was actually going to put shoes on and I'm just like, yeah, no. I was running late, so I didn't. Um, yeah, it's not that cold here, but it's really nice. Yeah. Like, it's like 80, which is like unheard of. So I can't wait to like go take my dog for a walk and him not be so out of breath. Um, and Beth is asking, what type of batting do you use? I use Quilter's Dream Select 80-20. And Cindy was asking, oh, what was the name of the book? You said Perfect 10, and can you still get it? Yeah, so the Perfect 10 book just came in. So it will be on the top of our What's New page. And um, the ruler, if you click on the book, you'll see it. But basically, if you just type Perfect and then 10 with the number sign, our search function isn't working great for this product, but um, you will find it on there. Uh, and what was the name of the label club you mentioned? Okay, so Sweetwater, um, I can't think exactly of her site, but it's sweetwaterco.com, I believe. Um, they are the designers, but they're a mode of fabric designer, and they design really cute collections, and they have three clubs that I'm in. I pay for all of them, so I'm, she's not paying me to say this. I'm in their towel club, so I get a towel every month. I'm in the label club, so I get two labels every month, and that was, I basically use them up every month, so this was this month's, and they also have a box that comes once a quarter that's similar to our sew sampler box, and it has, um, like, projects, fabric, of course, their fabric, which, I mean, I sell their fabric, I don't need to be in the club, but I'm in their club, I'm in fig tree clubs, I'm in all kinds of stuff, just like all of you guys, like, I... I buy fabric from other people too, so yeah. But they're they're um, and the label club is very inexpensive. I think it. I mean, they they have your name on them, um, and they're 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 amazing. Um, Sonia says uh, you do projects very often. Do you have any projects that are undone? Okay, so I moved about a year ago, and I had so many undone projects and so much like my house. I just had stuff everywhere. I had kid stuff. I had, I just basically cleaned house. I basically got rid of all, well actually saved a lot of their clothes, but anyway, I'm getting off track, but I, I basically cleaned, spring cleaned my entire house. And what I did with all my undone projects is I sold them on Etsy, no eBay. And, um, I don't have any undone projects, but I have in my closet, a ton of fig tree and sweet water things just sitting there. Um, most of the time I sew for work, so I have to finish it if I want to sell it. So, um, but yeah, I don't really have any undone, but it's because I sold them all. So I wouldn't have to move them, uh, cause I have a little bit less storage here than I had at my old house. So yeah. All right. 
Okay, um, and Sue says she was not having any success using the glow-in-the-dark thread even after trying all the things Wonderful suggested. So if anyone has suggestions for Sue. Yeah, so um, yeah, I think that you might need to use a thinner thread in the bobbin is kind of what I read in my, um, we have a, we have, I have a Facebook group and it's called Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook and I think that people were saying use a thinner thread in the bobbin. Because it is thick. I mean, it is a thicker thread. And then maybe use a needle that is uh, thicker. So I would use maybe a size 90 needle since the the needle would be thicker, which would help that thread go down. Those would be my first two things to try. Yeah. Lisa says she had a friend use the um, glow-in-the-dark thread on a Halloween mini quilt they gifted her, and it's awesome. And oh. It looks great. Awesome. Um, and Ashley thought that minky and glow in the dark uh, would be a okay coming from a plush maker perspective. Yeah, I'm sure it would. I was just too scared. <laughs> um, and let's see, uh, Nico Patch friend says, oh, "What is your favorite batting?" You already answered that, I think. Um, Corey was asking if your shirt runs true to size. It does. It's very true to size. Um, this is a size large. Um, that's usually, I usually wear a size large. Um, so yeah, our t-shirts that are short sleeve run small. This one runs true to size. Okay. And she can, and Lily can add a link to it below if you want to, want to look at that. Perfect. Yeah. The next question was, where do you get the shirt? <laughs> yeah. She can link it in the video, in the below. And Cindy is one of our YouTube members and she's like, is there anything coming up for members? Yeah, so we haven't decided what that is, but next week there will be something on for the YouTube members. So I'll explain what a YouTube member is. We have a program that's brand new from YouTube. They invited us to be part of the program. It is $4.99 a month, and we are offering, um, if you want to be in that, great. If you don't want to be in that, that's totally fine. I'm doing sit-down interviews where you can ask me anything. Um, I can go more in-depth because on here I don't see all of your questions all of the time. That's why when we start, anyway, we, we started off, we gave them a coupon, a really nice coupon. Most, a majority of the people used it. And then last week we gave them a free pattern. And next week we have something in the works. I have not decided what that is. So if you have ideas of what you want, put them in the community tab in the YouTube member group and Lily will let me know. Yeah. Uh, and thank you to everybody who joins because that totally helps us like, Filming all this is not free. Like it is a million programs and a million computers and a million, like all these things. Yeah, almost literally. Yeah, oh. it is super complicated. Uh, and Lisa was asking, what is on point math? On point math. So, hmm. um, let me think. If you put your quilt, this is set straight. So these blocks are set straight. If you had a quilt where the blocks were set diagonally, you have to figure out the triangle math on the sides and the corners. And those are called setting and corner squares. And there's a formula for them. And I'm not only going to show that, but I'm going to show what I do, which is I add and then trim down. So I'm actually going to have a PDF for you guys. And I'm going to have a quilt that is done the way I do it but it is not trimmed down yet. And then I'm gonna show you guys how you trim it down. And um, I'm gonna be doing this on a live stream and on a YouTube video. We're gonna be filming this next week in the studio and we have never done a live stream in the studio on all that big tables. So it might be a little rocky at first. Uh, Teresa says, can I be Kimberly's friend for giving fabric to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure what I'm going to do is when I want to get rid of fabric now, I can just ask you guys, like, hey, I have this fabric. Would you like it? Now, I will say some of it will be starched. Some of it will not be starched. You can usually tell because I starch really heavy. But, yeah, totally, I'm going to do that in the group. Um, I don't have anything to give away yet right now. But, yeah, in the future, we can do that. Uh, Lou Sawyer was asking, what's the pattern for the quilt behind you? So this is our charity quilt for 2019, Benefiting Make-A-Wish. It is called Threadology. You can reserve the kit and the backing set online if you want to sew it in your own fabric. The instructions will be online starting February 1st, 15th, all the way. It's the 1st and the 15th of every month from February 1st to the middle of June. And if you buy the kit, you get the full pattern up front. If you don't, you just download it online for free from our site on our blog. 
Uh, Shelly said, we are glad you are not a psychologist. So oh, wouldn't be. yeah, because then I wouldn't be quilting. Uh, and Carrie's asking, what do you do with a pattern that you were probably never going to make again? If you're not going to make it again, I would not give it away. I don't, I just think like you just keep it. I actually have kept every pattern that I've ever made. I mean, I think giving it away is wrong because then it's, it's just like a copyright infringement. If you don't want it anymore, throw it away. That's what I would do. I have kept everything I've ever made. I don't know why. It's just sentimental to me. And I have a little box and anything I have made, I just put it in there. Uh, what if there was a case where you resold it to somebody else? Like the pattern. I mean, if you didn't use it, I guess that's okay. I can't really, I can't really speak for that specific designer. I don't think they would love that, but I can't like, I can't tell you what to do in your own time. All right, are the borders in your kits also cut length of fabric? They're mostly not because most people hate that. This kit will be length of fabric because this fabric, if you cut it, you would be able to see because it is a very grainy fabric. So I designed this where it would be length of fabric. Most of our kits are not length of fabric because most of y'all hate that and you let me know that you hate it. Um, it's just kind of more of a personal preference of mine. And if I bought, let's just say I bought a kit from Joanna at Fig Tree, which I buy her kits all the time. I don't expect her kit to come length of fabric. So when I sit down to review her pattern, if I want it to be length of fabric, I will go to Fat Quarter Shop or I will go to Joanna's store and I will buy enough for me to use length of fabric. And then the leftover fabric that I talked about, I will not throw it away. I will put it in my bin of um, like just leftover fabric. And I use that leftover fabric all the time for tutorials that I do for you guys. I'll just like grab fabric or if I need to test a block, a lot of times when I'm doing um, it's so in my books, I can't get a block to come out right. Well, I'm not going to use the fabric that I have for the sample because I only have so much. So a lot of times I use it for that and then I'll just, that's kind of what this is. Like my piece back, I used it in there. All right. Uh, let me scroll down here. Uh, sorry, give me one second. I lost my place. Um, oh, Mary said, thank you for explaining your reservation fees. It makes so much sense and I appreciate your company policy. Um, just yeah, and anytime y'all have questions on stuff, just put it. Like, I'm happy to answer anything, like, anything y'all ask. I mean... Um, Joanna was asking, do you ever, um, do you ever do bundles with darker country style type colors? Do you ever do bundles? Yeah, so we have a group coming, um, today. It is arriving from Moda Today called Spice It Up. And we have three different colorway bundles in that, just off the top of my head. Um, we try to do a lot of smaller type bundles. Um, so yeah, I think we have a huge variety at our store. And Gabriel is asking, can you make the shirt you're wearing for men? Oh, well, we're trying to, um, I think you could wear like the larger size and I think it would work. Um, I, we were, we're trying to work with the company to come up with a shirt where you can just go and you can say, okay, I'm a man and I want a man's shirt and I want this size or I'm a woman and I want this size. We're trying to do that for the future shirts we do. We're kind of stuck right now because I'm very, I want, if it's something with my company, my name, I want it to look a certain way and I haven't found a company yet that it works yet because I know a lot of people have asked for um, sleeveless tank, top, tank yeah. tops. So it's kind of like in the works, but it's kind of stalled because we're still trying to figure all that out. It's a new venture. Um, and Bunny actually has a request that a lot of people have been asking for. Would you consider doing a video on how you organize your stash? Yeah, I can do that. I have, um, we can do that one day in one of my live streams in my closet. I, I don't have, I will say I don't have much of a stash compared to a lot of people, uh, because I'm not one of those people that just goes and buys a bundle. I only buy it if I need it. I have a ton of thread though and a ton of buttons and a ton of other stuff. I don't have that much fabric, but I can definitely show you what I have and how I organize it. Um, the only reason I haven't is I feel like it's not going to be that useful because I don't have a stash like a lot of you have. Um, I just have a little bit. But yeah, we can do that in the future. 
All right, and Jane says that she's actually used the chat feature on our site, and it's great. Awesome. So we rolled out the chat feature this week. We just have one person running it, um, and we're just doing it slowly, just bef you know, just kind of rolling it out. And I think it's, I think it's awesome. I go in and I read what y'all write. And Lisa says she's hooked on starching and she knows it shrinks the fabric, so should she use it on her charm packs? So, okay, so this is what I do. You should not use it on your charm packs, but I do. So I will either buy a second charm pack to make up for what I need, or like if I'm doing, for example, in Lori Holt's acorn table runner, you needed four two and a half inch squares to put on the corner. So I made them two and a quarter inches. So my little cornerstones are skinnier so that I could so that I could starch. So in general, you should not starch your, your pre-cuts, um, but I do. So I just kind of, like again, I just make it work for me. I don't enjoy working with fabric that is not starched because I sew really fast and it just, I feel like it's just not as accurate. So you should not on a charm pack, but, or, you should adjust your pattern slightly because it will it will um, if you're not used to starching if you start with a five inch for example square one size will say five inches and the other side will go to four and a half same thing on a layer cake what it will one size one side will say ten inches and one will go to like nine and a half it will shrink in one direction half an inch all right uh, let's see the membership. Oh, Shelly was asking how did Emma do in the Nutcracker trials? She did good. She is going to be a holiday dancer and a Russian dancer. I don't know. She got two parts. Um, so she has, she has rehearsals this weekend and every weekend until December 1st. Oh or no, an Arabian dancer, Arabian dancer, Arabian dancer and a holiday dancer. So I think she's super happy. Oh, and Joanna says, uh, the link in the description right now for the Perfect 10 uh, says it's sold out. Um, that's probably just an issue with the link, so I'll fix it. Oh, Lily will fix the link. So that was linking before to the uh, club, and now it's actually a live product, so we actually need to redirect that. So we will fix all of that. That will be the first thing I do when I get off this live stream. All right, and Sue says, you can put your older thread in the freezer for a short period of time, and when it thaws, it should help. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. We still got a lot of stuff coming in, um, but we are almost at 50 minutes. Let me just see on Instagram. Oh, Joanna had uh, a joke. She said, how did the quilters get to their retreat? With their walking foot. That's so funny. Uh, lots of people saying you rock. They enjoy the live streams. Um, Oh, and are you going to do any demos in this live stream? No, on this one, I didn't. I had so much new product and so many questions on the Meet the Makers that I didn't um, have time. But in the future, one of the things we're going to do is I can, um, I'm going to, next week's going to be a demo. I'm going to also show, somebody is asking for me to show how you cut smaller pieces, how to work with Creative Grids rulers, which Creative Grids rulers I use. So that's kind of next, those are the next two on the list or next three. If you have other ideas, send them. Um, oh yeah, and we have some other quilts that I was going to show you guys um, that are new. This is called Compositions. And it is an It's So Emma pattern. And um, what is cool about it is it has three actual settings in it. So you can make the block, but you can set it three different ways. So I think it's really cute and unique. And it is an It's So Emma pattern. Do you know who sewed it, Lily? Yes, I have their name and I'm just looking at it right now. It was made so. by Sarah Price and quilted by Gina Till. Yeah, so Sarah Price is, um, she does our It's So Emma. And this is custom quilting by Gina Tell. If you Google Thread Graffiti, she will show up, and she has done a live stream for us, but you can see her beautiful um, quilting, if you want to see it up close. Oops. Okay. And then we have one other It's So Emma pattern um, that I was going to show you guys. I think Crystal, Crystal designed this. Yes. Um, and it was made by Denise Rudolph. So Denise is part of our content team. So she like loads all the patterns. I know she watches, so hi. She loads all of our patterns and notions. And she sewed this, she's new to our team and it's an it's a pattern called Summer 
tied and this I really like this because it uses sunny side up which is a kind of a spring group but we added like a gray grunge and it totally changes the look um, of the uh, design so I I like when we kind of change things up but yeah any other questions that you guys have um, Shelly was, oh, I think she's having trouble joining our YouTube group. Okay. Um, so Shelly, I will look into it right after the live stream. Yeah, and then if you have any questions, just put them in the comments and Lily will look at all of that. It takes her 45 minutes at a minimum to get from here to work because I live really far from work. So, um, but she will get to it. Yeah, um, we still have questions coming in. Um, that's but right. I think it's a good time to wrap up. Okay, so we will, if you have questions on there, we will try to address them next week. As you see, we keep lists of what I wasn't able to get to. And again, if you um, get on Facebook, join our um, Kimberly Stitch Squad. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and like our videos so that we can get more viewers. And um, also, if you're interested, join our YouTube member group. And on that, I do want hints on what you're wanting. So um, let me know on that. And I will see you guys next Wednesday.